Welcome to the Grim Tutors, your one-stop shop for all things Magic the Gathering. I'm Oblivion. And I'm Colton, also known as Pez. Today we're going to be talking in our series about abilities. What's the ability that we're going to be talking about? Today we're going to be talking about triggered abilities. What is a triggered ability? What, what does it do? How does it happen? So a triggered ability is when something happens and it makes something else happen. Right? Um, yeah, somewhere in that ballpark here. Let's let's do a deep dive analysis on what a triggered ability is. Entering deep dive analysis zone. Is that diving? I did a better job diving than uh, some people in the last uh, couple months. <laughs> but um, tis. We're very topical. Topical. A triggered ability is an ability that automatically does something when a certain event occurs or a set of conditions is met. The latter is called a state triggered ability. Wow. Those are certainly all words. Wow. Indeed. So it seems like my explanation was kind of valid. Yeah, it was pretty good. All right. It was all right. So essentially, there are abilities that different permanents have that once certain criteria have been met something has happened then the thing does the thing right it allows the permanent to make something else happen right okay what is a state triggered ability so when the set of conditions is met is the state triggered ability okay so then what does that mean like the state-based action so like the requirement was met for your trigger to happen it's the state of the game oh okay so in the state of the game something happened the requirement was met for your thingy to do the thingy wow wow a little bit that's why we're talking about it so is a triggered ability what someone is saying or referring to when they say i have a trigger or trigger on the stack so when someone is saying i have a trigger or trigger on the stack they're referring to a triggered ability, usually. Would you like to talk about what uh, a plethora of those triggered abilities are, my beautiful co-host? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what we're here to do, right? Yeah. So the first triggered ability that we're going to be talking about is Afflict. Like that shitty brand of clothes that you could get at the buckle in the early 2000s? I don't know what any of those things are. You don't remember Affliction clothing? No. Is it is it like et, like I know Etnies is a skate brand or is it Tapped Out? Is what I was. Thinking. Yeah, it's like it's like Tapped Out adjacent. So Afflict is whenever a creature with an ability becomes blocked, um, defending player, so the person who blocked the creature loses life equal to the Affliction value. So if. A creature has a flicked two and it attacks me and I block it, I will take two, two loss points yep. of my health. Correct. You you take two ouchies. So but it's only when they're blocked, right? So if right. I didn't have any creatures, then the creature would just deal damage to me like normal. Yep, just normal combat damage. So it's only when it's blocked. Seems easy enough. The next triggered ability is one that I play a lot, um, which is afterlife. What's afterlife, dear? A creature that has afterlife, it's afterlife in a number. So like afterlife three. So whenever the creature that has afterlife dies, you create that many of the afterlife number, black and white spirits, uh, I think they're one ones with flying, after it dies. So it's like, it, it's like the creature dies and it makes a certain number of ghosts. Um, but it only counts if the creature dies. Not exiles. Not exiles, right. So. What about if it's countered? Goes to the graveyard from the battlefield. Don't get low spurts if it's countered. Right. So he has to be on your battlefield and die of natural causes and go to the grave and go to the graveyard <laughs> for you to make your friends. Okay. Oh, the next one's a real fun one. Uh, I think you should take real it because I haven't heard of it before. You've never heard of Annihilator? I mean, not 
in a Magic the Gathering context. Never never seen the flying spaghetti monsters with, with Annihilator? No. So, Annihilator, uh, a great mechanic, one would say, uh, to tilt your opponents. <laughs> um, so, Annihilator is whenever the creature um, goes to combat, um, the Annihilator, uh, let's say, I think it's Emrakul the Aeon's Torn, uh, 15 mana, 15, 15, it has Annihilator 6. So whenever you attack with Emrakul, your opponent has to sacrifice 6 permanents. That's what Annihilator does. Oh. Because they they're all drowsy and they annihilate everything. And is that when it's cast or when it attacks? That is specifically when it attacks. Three. Some of them have cast... Like, when you cast them, do other things. But that's not what we're talking about right now. It is just specifically when you move to the to the bonk, to the combat. And you make it bonk. Mm-hmm. Defending player has to sacrifice X amount of permanence, where X is whatever the Annihilator is. What happens if they can't? So if my opponent had four permanents and I attack them with a creature with Annihilator 6... They, had to sa- they have to sacrifice all four of their permanents, and then nothing else happens. Is it permanence or non-land permanence? It's permanence. Ugh. It's the whole shebang. That's icky. <laughs> it says in the thing that Mark Rosewater says that it is unlikely to be ever used ever again. <laughs> because it is so devastating. Annihilating. It's very clever. See what I did there? I did. It looks like next on the list is Battle Cry, which is a seemingly simple one. What's it do? A creature with Battle Cry, when it attacks, it gives a plus one plus O oh buff to all of the other creatures that are attacking with it. Oh, that's really cool. So, so my creatures get one more attack, mm-hmm. but no butt. Right. No defense. Yeah. All tits. No ass. Shake, shake my head. <laughs> shake my head. <laughs> And this buff is only during combat. It's not forever. That's very interesting. Next on the list is Bushido. And this one is, again, very simple. It gives it a buff when it is blocked or blocks. So if it has Bushido 1, it will give it plus 1, plus 1, the creature. It will give it plus 1, plus 1 when it is blocked or is blocking. Hmm. That's pretty simple. Seems pretty easy. All right, now you get to do the next one, which is a big point of pride. The next uh, on the list is one of my absolute favorite to ever exist in the realm of Magic the Gathering because it is really broken. It has broken a lot of cards. They've had to change around a whole bunch of stuff. They've had to change some things how the game works because of this mechanic. This mechanic is Cascade. So one of my favorites is Bloodbright Elf. It's a red and a green, two colorless, three two. It has haste and cascade. And cascade is, so I cast, so Bloodbright Elf is four mana, right? So the cascade is, I get a spell with converted mana value three or less, and I get to cast that card for free. For free. For free. Where does that card come from? It comes from the top of your library. Cascade is, um, when you cast this card, reveal the top card of your library until you reveal a card with less than four CMC or CMV, and you get to cast that card for free. Can you choose to like not cast a certain card if you want to? Yeah, so say you cast your Blood Braid Elf and you run into Counterspell. You don't want to Counterspell your own Blood Braid Elf. You just put the Counterspell on the bottom of your library with the rest of the cards. And that's it. So that's where they go, is they just... After you're done cascading through your library, you just put the other cards in a random order on the bottom of your library. So that means once you're done cascading however many cards you have, you shuffle them up, put them in a random order, and put them on the bottom of your deck. 
What's the card that has like Cascade, 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 Cascade? Is that Apex Devastator? It is in fact Apex Devastator. So that means you get to do it four times? You get to do it four times, just like Maelstrom Wanderer says Cascade, Cascade. You get to do it twice. Gnarly. Gnarly indeed. So the next ability we're going to be talking about is Champion. Champion is, I uh, my, cha my champion creature comes into play I choose another creature I control, and it kind of, like, goes underneath the creature with champion. Not really. It just kind of, like, bloops it out of the game. But then when your creature with champion dies or leaves the game or whatever, your other creature gets to come back. Seems weird. Don't know when it would apply, but maybe it'd be kind of cool. It is odd. The next ability we're going to be talking about is... Communitative upkeep. Is that how you say that word? Com cum. Communitative upkeep. Communi communitative upkeep. Communitative upkeep. You're getting closer. Cumulative. Oh, I'm putting too much emphasis on the cum. <laughs> Cumulative upkeep. That one. Cumulative. Not cumulative. Cum. Like cumin. It's not cumin. It's cumin. Do you have a... Do you have a... A, a magic card? Perhaps a... I do. A, a fish of some sorts that comes to mind when you think of cum... Cumulative upkeep? Yeah, I do think of a fish that comes to mind. So, uh, the best example that comes off the top of my head for this is Mystic Remora. Yeah! So, Mystic Remora has a cumulative upkeep of one colorless mana. So, what happens is you cast your, your, your Mystic Remora for one blue. And then on your next turn, during your upkeep step... You have to pay one if it's the first time, like the first go round that you've had it. And then you'll go through your turn and it comes back to you. And then on your upkeep, the next time you'll have to pay two. So if you don't pay those costs, you have to sacrifice the permanent. It essentially just keeps going up every time it gets back to you. Right. Right. So it'll go from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 7 to 8 to 9 to 10. Yes, and you have to do it on your upkeep. So after you untap all of your permanents and before you draw a card or do anything else, you have to make that decision of whether or not you're going to pay to keep it around. Is that why it's called cumulative upkeep? Yes, because it is something it is. that you do on your upkeep. And it accumulates over time. Yes. Wow, look at me. <laughs> so smart. So smart. So the next thing we're going to be talking about is demonstrate. Would you like to demonstrate how it works? That was very goofy. If I cast a spell that has demonstrate, it allows me to make a copy of that spell. So it's like I get a two for one special. I am a big fan of two for one specials. But if I do copy it, it lets another opponent also copy it yeah you get to pick a person to copy the spell and they can choose different targets for it i don't necessarily know why you would want to do this and i can't even think of a particular spell that has, that demonstrate. has demonstrate so maybe it's just one of those things that we just don't see a lot for very good reason i would assume so because i also don't know i also don't know if them copying it lets other people copy it too and then it's just an em endless loop of demonstration. Yeah. Getting real circle jerky around here. Getting real circle jerky. Yep. <laughs> the next ability is dethrone, which I think is... I, I love it. It's simple. It's going to be easy to explain. Not a lot of questions about it. Whenever a creature that has dethrone attacks the player that has the most or is tied for the most life you get to put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. That's that's simple. Yeah. That's nice. Really easy. And also, and a, it's kind of like a checks and balances kind of thing because it's like, you know, you, you attack the, the person with the most life, keep their 
keep yeah. keep the the life totals in your in your game kind of well rounded with everyone. And attacking the player with the most life, you get like an extra little bonk on them too. Yeah, that's wonderful. The next ability we're going to be talking about is Echo. 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 So take for example, burr, 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 Mog War Marshal. Uh, Mog War Marshal is a one red, one colorless, one one that says uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, you make a one one goblin. But there's a catch. It has Echo for its mana cost that you played it for. So it it has one red, one colorless Echo. And if you don't pay the Echo cost in your upkeep, the creature dies. On your next turn? Yeah, on your next turn. On your next turn, if you pay the Echo cost to keep it around, do you have to pay it every upkeep or not? Nope, you're just, just a one-time guy. So you cast it, your turn is over, comes back to your next turn on your upkeep. You either have to sacrifice that creature or pay its echo cost. Yep. But if you pay to keep it around, you don't have to pay it again yep. in the future. Our next ability is Evolve, which I also, <laughs> which I also think is very cool. So when a creature has evolved and it's on your battlefield, what it's saying is whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, if that creature has greater power or toughness than that creature, you get to put a 1-1 counter on it. Lots of 1-1 counters with these with these abilities. Yeah, the counter's going on the creature that's on your battlefield with Evolve. So let's say that the creature with Evolve is a 1-1, and you cast a creature that's a 2-2. You can put a plus one, plus one counter on your Evolve creature that's a 1-1. But now, that creature is effectively a 2-2, so you would have to have something with three power or toughness or more the next to time the to get the next the next little counter oh the next one's a fun one and on some of my favorite cards uh it is exalted so it is whenever this creature tax alone it gets plus one plus one until the end of the turn oh like uh noble hierarch yeah or iggy nobles that's ignoble hierarch yeah ignoble hierarch it doesn't matter if it's that creature that has exalted or another creature that you control just as long as it's attacking alone it gets plus one plus one yep as long as you control a creature with exalted um whether you attack with a creature that has exalted or not as long as you attack with just one it gets the exalted trigger which is plus one plus one until the end of the turn and you get it for however many instances of exalted you have so let's say you have a noble hierarch and an ignoble hierarch and then one random guy and you send that one random guy to go fight alone he's gonna get plus two plus two because you have two creatures with exalted and your random friend is attacking all by himself so cool the next ability is called exploit um, I play a card that does this a lot in Arena um, called Felstinger. Um, so when the creature with exploit enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a creature. And when you do that, there's usually some sort of benefit or some sort of perk to doing so. So for the instance of Felstinger, when it comes in into play onto the battlefield, if you choose to exploit another creature, by sacrificing it, you get to lose two life and draw two cards. The next we're going to be talking about is Extort. Um, I think Blind Obedience is something that comes to mind when I think of Extortion yep. or uh, Crypt Ghast. Yep. So Extort is um, whenever you cast a spell, you may pay a white or a black because it's like kind of a hybrid, that hybrid mana situation going on. And whenever you do that, uh, each of your opponents will lose a life and you'll gain that much life. So say you're playing a game of Commander and you cast a card with Extort, your opponents will each lose one life and you'll gain three. The next ability we're going to be talking about is Fabricate, which is something that I hope to see a return to someday. I think it was originally in Kaladesh. 
Um, it's on one of my favorite creatures. Uh, I played in my Mahati uh, like treasure uh, sacrifice Rectos deck, uh, which is Marionette Master. Marionette Master um, has whenever it enters the battlefield, you fabricate three. Fabricate is you can either put that many plus one plus one counters on your creature or you can make that many one one colorless servo creature tokens so the so if marionette master has fabricate three your choices are put three plus one plus one counters on marionette master or ma make three bubbies seems easy enough yeah so the next ability on our list is flanking so flanking applies to a creature that is attacking and when it gets blocked by a creature that does not have flanking the creature that is blocking gets negative one negative one until the end of turn that's a weird mechanic it is it makes them maybe die or um swings them down just a little bit yeah or it lessens the damage inflicted on the creature that you're attacking with Right. But I honestly can't think of a creature off the top of my head that has flanking. Knight of the White Nimbus, I think. It's a white, white 2-2 two -two has flanking. I mean, that would make sense, yeah. Something else about flanking that's weird. Um, whenever two creatures with flanking, like say I attack with a creature with flanking and my opponent has a creature with flanking and they block each other, you don't get to put the minus one minus one counter on it because the other creature has flanking. So it's kind of like a, in in my head I see flanking as like a whew, like the the creature kind of maneuvers it around the creature to the back and like pokes it, giving it the minus one minus one. Mm -hmm. But the two creatures with flanking, they they do like a little switcheroo, but they're both just standing there looking at each other. Spider Man. Yeah, they're pointing at each other because they because they both have flanking. Next ability on the list is for Mirrodin. For Mirrodin is uh, it's printed on a lot of equipments. I'm pretty sure it's only printed on equipments actually. Um, uh, it says when this equipment enters the battlefield, attach it to just a two-two red rebel creature token. So you cast the equipment. And it's automatically equipped to a little bubby. Yeah. So you cast it, it makes a friend, it attaches itself to the friend. Kind of like living weapon in a way. But I think we'll get to that later. The next one on the list is Frenzy. Frenzy is just a number. And whenever a creature with Frenzy attacks and isn't blocked, it gets plus its Frenzy number plus zero until the end of turn. So if it has Frenzy three, it would have plus three plus zero whenever it attacked until the end of turn so it's like the one ability we talked about earlier where they get just attack and no toughness right it's all tits in this area all tits but the next ability is gravestorm i'm pretty sure it's only been printed on like one card but um it is whenever you cast this spell copy it for each permanent that was put into a graveyard this turn and you can choose new copies for the targets of the grave the gravestorm ability so if you if five things went to the graveyard this turn and you have five gravestorm six gravestorm i guess because you you have the initial cast and then five after it Gravestorm is just storm, but for permanents entering the graveyard instead of you casting a whole bunch of spells. It's a weird, funky thing that I'm sure we'll never see again, but it's on there. The next ability on the list is Haunt. Uh, it's an older mechanic. Um, they they said that they're never going to really bring it back because it's, it's a little too like over overpowered kind of thing i believe there's a there's a black white two colorless card called blinding bat and it has haunt um and it says whenever this creature enters the battlefield or the creature that you haunt leaves the battlefield you gain two and your opponent loses two life so it's kind of like you get an extra enter the battlefield trigger with the haunt so Haunt is choose target creature. That creature is now haunted by the creature that had haunt. 
So your blinding bat is now kind of a, a ghost. Did it die then? Yeah, so your blinding bat dies, the haunts ability triggers, and you target any other creature on the battlefield. And when that creature dies, you get the enter the battlefield. You get the the other you get the other enter the battlefield trigger but i guess it, at that time it's a leave the battlefield trigger so it's a it's kind of an enter and a leave whatever has haunt will tell you what you get when the thing that you haunt dies right so the the bat has the enter the battlefield trigger but when it dies you get to haunt something and then when that creature dies you get the effect of the bats enter the battlefield's effect again well, that doesn't seem confusing at all. Yeah, real weird. The next ability is Hideaway. So if you cast something with Hideaway, it's going to be Hideaway and a number. When you cast it, you can look at the top cards of your library for whatever number the Hideaway is. And then you exile that card face down, put the rest of the cards on the bottom of your library. And I believe that there are certain things that can happen where... It will let you cast the spell that you hid away, like for free, yep. um, or other conditions can be met to be uh, to allow you uh, to cast that spell. Yep. So if something has like hideaway five, you look at the top five cards of your library and you pick one. Uh, the next ability on our list is ingest. Pretty simple one. It's whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, they exile the top card of their library. Why do they have to name it that? Now we're up to Living Weapon, which we did mention a little bit earlier in the four Mirrodin category. So when you cast a equipment that has Living Weapon, you make a 0-0 zero, zero Phyrexian Germ and attach the weapon to it. So it's kind of the same thing. You cast your equipment, it enters the battlefield, it makes a friend to attach it to. Next up on the list is Melee. Uh, whenever this creature attacks, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each opponent attacked with a creature this combat. So say you're playing a game of commander and you have three other opponents. You attack each one of them with a different creature. Your creature will get plus three, plus three. Gross. Yeah. It just makes it bigger for dealing round the clock damage. The next ability on the list is Mentor, which I think is a very cool ability. So whenever a creature attacks that has Mentor, you can put a plus one plus one counter on another creature that's attacking that has lesser power. So if you have a two two with Mentor and a one one and you attack with both of those creatures, you can put a plus one plus one counter on the one one. So then you're attacking with two two twos? Yeah, that's, that's how the math works to me. That's great math. Next on the list is a mechanic that I think is interesting called Myriad. Um, it's really only going to be beneficial in a multiplayer scenario. What happens is whenever you attack with a creature with Myriad, you're going to make a token copy of the creature for every other opponent that you have that's going to be tapped and attacking that player. So let's say it's you and your three amigos at a commander pod. So I'm going to attack Jim Bob with my creature with Myriad. So that's going to make another one of my, we'll use Battle Angels of Tear as an example. I attack Jim Bob with Battle Angels of Tear. I will then make a copy of that that is a token that's attacking Steve and a copy of that that's attacking Joe. So everyone's gonna get bonked with that. And then all of the tokens at the end of combat just go to exile. So you attack one person and then you make copies of that creature with Myriad for each other opponent that you have. And then they all bonk one opponent. So if you have, if you're in a pot of four and you attack one with, with it, you're going to make two more to attack your other two friends. Next up on the list is one of uh, my favorites that's got a sweet spot in my heart is Persist. Um, my favorite card with Persist is Kitchen Finks. It is a three mana hybrid, green white, hybrid, green white, colorless, um, three two. When it enters the battlefield, you gain three life. Um, 
but persist is when the creature dies, if it doesn't have a minus one, minus one counter on it, you get to bring it back to the battlefield under your control with a minus one, minus one counter on it. So when your creature dies, you get to bring it back, or when your Kitchen Pinx dies as a three, two, you get to bring it back as a two, one. And you can just keep repeating that until its toughness would be zero? No, so when the minus one, minus one counter is placed on the creature and then it dies, it checks to see if there's minus one, minus one counter on it, and there is, so it, it stays in the graveyard. Got it. So you can only do it once. Yep. The next ability is one that I know absolutely nothing about, which is prizes. Um, prizes come from the Infinity sets, which are sets that have cards that are often not legal. They're like goofy, weird, you can do silly stuff with it, but they're not legal unless you're playing some sort of sealed or draft situation where you have infinity things. Prizes are connected to attractions that come from an infinity. So like those weird cards, it's like open an attraction. Yeah, it's like an attraction makes a mini game. And if you win the mini game, you get a prize. Ugh. That sounds like it messes up the fundamentals of Magic the Gathering. <clears throat> might be might be a question for someone else. But uh, since a lot of Infinity products um, or I guess cards that come from Inf Infinity are not legal in a lot of sets, it does not come up very often. Or at least if they're legal, a lot of people aren't playing them. Because then you have to set up attractions and then there's something about stickers and... Oh, drowsy guacamole tightropes. The next up on the list is Provoke. Provoke is whenever you attack with a creature, you can choose a creature that your opponent controls, uh, whether it be tapped or not, and you can have it block your creature. So say you're attacking with a 4-4 trample provoke creature and your opponent's got a 2-2 two -two that's giving you the pesky rundown you can have you can take that creature and make it block your creature so your creature will punch it in the face next on the list is prowess so whenever you if you have a creature on your battlefield with prowess whenever you cast a non-creature spell the creature with prowess will get plus one plus one until end of turn there are even some cards that have prowess prowess, so they will get two plus one plus one counters whenever you cast a non-creature spell. Next up on the list is Rampage. Uh, Rampage is whenever your creature becomes blocked by one or more creatures, the Rampage ensues kind of thing. So your creature gets bigger for how many other creatures that are blocking it. So if it has Rampage five, it gets five for each. So say your creature has rampage five and or I'm being attacked with a creature with rampage five and I only block it with one creature. The rampage will not trigger because I only blocked it with one creature. But say I blocked it with three creatures, then the creature will trigger the creature will trigger rampage five twice. So then it'll get plus 10, plus 10. So whatever the rampage number is, it gets plus that. So in this example, five. For every creature blocking it beyond the first creature, it's going to get that many. So if you blocked it with two creatures, it would get plus five, plus five. If you blocked it with two, plus 10, plus 10, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Very ridiculous. It could get out of control kind of thing. Next thing on the list is reconfigure, which I see a lot on... Um, equipments that are also creatures, um, like rabbit battery is one that I can think of. So Lizard blades. <laughs> that's very silly. So when you cast your rabbit battery, it's just a guy, but you can pay its reconfigure cost of one red mana and you can attach it like an equipment to another creature. But you can only do that at sorcery speed, of course. And while it's attached to that other creature, it in and of itself is not a creature anymore. So you can cast it. It's a it's a it's its own dude, bro. But you can also pay a reconfigure cost to make it an equipment on someone else, where it is now just a sword or just a helmet and not its own creature. 
The next ability on the list is Recover. One that I've never really seen before, I don't think. Recover is uh, whenever the creature with Recover is put into a graveyard, you pay whatever the Recover cost is, and you get to put it in your hand. And if you don't, you have to exile the creature instead. So then we have Renown. So Renown is another one that's just Renown and a number. So we'll use three in this instance. Whenever a creature with Renown deals combat damage to a player, if it's not Renowned, it gets plus one plus one counters for its Renown number and then becomes Renowned. So if it's just a 2-2 two -two and I attack and it deals combat damage, once it deals combat damage, since it does not have its renowned counters, it will get its three plus one plus one counters and is now considered renowned. Another one that I have not heard of. I think it was in Origins a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Next ability on the list is Ripple, like Fudge, Fudge Ripple. So it's it's ripple then a number, right? So a lot of these are card name N, and the N stands for n numerical value. So let's hypothetically say we're casting a card with ripple six. Um, so it says, whenever you cast this spell, you may reveal the top six cards of your library. Uh, you may cast any cards revealed with the same name as the spell without paying their mana costs, put the rest on the bottom of your library. So it's like Cascade in that you go off the top of your library to find more stuff, but instead of it being any spell, it has to be the spell with the exact same name. Not applicable in one of formats. <laughs> so I think the biggest thing that has Ripple is Thrumming Stone. Uh, Thrumming Stone is usually played in like uh, rat decks or like Shadowborn Apostle decks where you can have like a lot of like quite a few rats and like Shadowborn Apostle says you can have as many as you want of them in your deck or persistent pers persistent petitioners something like that where you can have as many as them as you want in your deck so every single time that you ripple you hit that creature and then you ripple again and then you hit the creature and then you ripple again and then it keeps rippling. The next on the list is another another gem of something I've never heard of called Soul Bond. Oh, Soul Bond's a fun one. Is it? So it says you can pair this creature with another unpaired creature when it when either enters the battlefield. They remain paired for as long as you control both of them. Yeah. So I think the 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 most common uh, paired soul bonded creatures that I see are Deadeye Navigator and Peregrine Drake. So you soul bond onto your uh, Peregrine Drake and you can pay two mana and it goes bye bye. But then it comes back. And you get to untap your five lands with your. <laughs> Paragon Drake, and then you tap your five lands. You just get to make infinite mana. So does everything with Soul Bond like give you a different thing, or does it? Does every Soul Bond like flicker the other creature? No, every Soul Bond is a different effect. Whenever a creature with Soul Bond dies, both of them die because they're Soul Bonded. I mean that 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 does make sense. Yeah. So you get you pair it with another creature, and then you get some sort of perk. Yeah, they they kind of become one. The next on the list is Soul Shift. Uh, this is another one that's the name and a number. Let's say you have a card with Soul Shift 5. This says that whenever the creature with Soul Shift 5 dies, you can return a target spirit card with mana value 5 or less from your graveyard to your hand. So you've got a creature with Soul Shift 5, you have another spirit with five or less mana in your mana cost in your graveyard once your creature that's on the battlefield with soul shift five dies you can return one of those from your graveyard to your hand next up on the list is storm so storm is whenever you cast this spell copy it for each other spell you that has been cast this turn so it counts your spells and your opponent's spells Storm counts can get real big real fast. Real big real fast. 
because it's everything. Creature, non-creature, whatever. Counts them all. Counts them all. One that we see a lot is like Fluster Storm, which is a counter spell, and you can have it make as many copies for however many things were done before. So if there were six spells cast this turn, you cast Fluster Storm, you now have not one, but seven. Because <laughs> you have your original Fluster Storm and six, six copies. copies. <laughs> so now there's seven counter spells to deal with and gets real it gets real funky real fast. The next thing on the list is training, which is kind of similar to mentoring. Um, it's a little worse than mentoring though, kind of, right? Mentor is if a, whenever it attacks, you put a plus one, plus one on a creature with lesser power. Training is whenever this creature attacks. If it's attacking with a creature with greater power, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So it's kind of like reverse mentor. Yeah. So like you might get one out of it, maybe two, depending on how your deck is set up. So if I have a one, one with training and a two, two, and I attack with both because the, tr the creature with training is attacking with a creature with greater power, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. Next up on the list is undying. Undying says when this creature, it's kind of like um, persist, but persist is it puts a minus one, minus one counter on it. Undying is you get a plus one, plus one counter. So it's whenever the creature dies, bring it back to the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter. But it only happens once still. Right? Yep, only happens once. Our last thing on the list is ward. Oh, that's a pretty new one. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, I think ward started in um, Strixhaven. So like 2021 era. Oh, okay. So ward is, it has a cost associated with it. Um, usually it's mana, but there's been, there's something new that's shaken that, that up. Um, it's, it's ward and a cost. So let's say a creature has ward three and it'll be like three with the colorless mana symbol, right? Three in a circle. So if an opponent wants to cast a spell that targets that creature with ward three, they have to pay an extra three colorless mana in order for that spell to impact that creature. So it's like its own, it has its own uh, like shield over it, but the shield is only there unless it gets paid for. It's not permanently there. It's a shield that you can pay off. Yeah, it's a, it's like a mob shield. <laughs> hey buddy, get out of here. <laughs> Now, the reason why I say that that's changed a little bit is that, and this also could be incorrect, but all the ward costs that I've ever seen have been directly related to you paying mana into it. So if it has ward one, the opponent has to pay one, so on and so forth. Um, the new Sauron that got printed in the Lord of the Rings set, it has ward uh, sacrifice a legendary permanent or maybe it's creature or artifact, um, it makes you sacrifice something. So like you cannot pay into this. If you wanna if you wanna hit that Sauron, I think it's the Dark Lord one, if you want to hit it with some sort of spell, you have to sacrifice a legendary permanent. I wanna say it's creature or artifact. It'll be on the screen. So Ward has had like a few different kind of things. It's still Ward, but I'm pretty sure there's like something with like Ward you have to pay three life. So oh yeah, there is. Yeah, but I still think of like ward pay three life as some sort of. Co I mean, I guess they're all costs. Yeah, they're all they're all costs in their own way. But like ward pay three mana or ward pay three life is very different than ward. You so have to get rid of your shit permanent. now. Yeah. Like that's <laughs> wild to me. But I guess Sauron do be Sauronin. Um, what it, what happens when Sauron? I mean, Sar Saroff. When Saroff. So is that you sacking something? It was like you're just turning Sour off. Saroff, yeah. Sauron? Saroff. In order for that permanent that has ward to be able to be the target of a spell an opponent controls, that opponent must pay the ward cost, whatever it is. Yeah. Life, mana, getting rid of your shit, whatever it may be. I think that's it for today's show. Absolutely it is.
thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to support us, uh, you can go support us on Patreon. Um, you can also help us out by clicking the like button, subscribing, leaving a comment. You can also find us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitch at GrimTutorsMTG. No Facebook, maybe Threads. Oh yeah, we did make a Threads. I yeah, I think we made a Threads, but Threads isn't real. It's the Instagram, Twitter thing we made one it's mark zuckerberg's twitter but remember facebook's for old people it's still uh it's still grim tutors mtg and we have one will i remember to use it what we're gonna be doing over there probably not a whole lot because it's just it's just facebook i've kept it as an insurance policy in case twitter really does like fume and then everyone stops using twitter which would be real unfortunate because i feel like i've been hitting the twitters hard but you know it'd be like that i think it'll be fine but i made it just in case we don't have one of those fancy blue sky things though it's invite only and we don't have one uh we will be con we will be continuing our series on abilities with static abilities next time like the stuff that i get on my socks yes the snow in your tv That's all for us. Ta-ta. Bye. You want to start or you want me to start? Up to you. It's up to you. Or you want to rock, paper, scissors for it? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Well, start us off. I forgot what we were talking about already. Oh. All right, restart. Hi, welcome to the fuck. <laughs> Today we're gonna be talker. <laughs> Today we're gonna be tacoing about triggers. A triggered ability is an ability. Oh, had to scratch my mustache. Sorry. It jinx. You owe me a soda pop. Okay. Dream, did you fuck something? My camera was wiggling. Oh, it's because he's up there licking himself. Oh, he's licking himself like a freak. He didn't even care. You don't got to creep over. No. Just come here. Just come here. You'll be held. You're fine, honey. You got that big old brain. She's so smart and pretty. Look at her. Isn't she gorgeous?